The road to success is never straight, so keep trying. This is Dr. Sami. Hello, students, and uh, welcome. This is uh, Dr. Sami. I'm, I'm welcoming you to yet another chemistry demonstration. And for today, we're doing back titration. In one of my previous uploads, I did a direct titration. But for today, we want to go to another type of titration that is back titration. And um, the apparatus that I'm going to work with, uh, I'm going to have a burette that is well mounted on a retort stand. For this case, I'll do three trials. So I will require to use three conical flask. I'll be working with three conical flask. I'm having a 50 ml measuring cylinder. I have some two empty beakers. I have two empty beakers. I will have a filter funnel, a pipette filler, and of course a pipette. Good, I'll have a stirring rod. For my procedure, I will work with the solution here, labeled solution Q, that is solution Q. I have another solution here labeled solution P. I will work with a solid labeled T, solid T. Uh, in here, I have an ophthalm indicator. I have an ophthalm indicator and I will have some distilled water. I have some distilled water. And uh, just to take you through the procedures, what uh, experiment exactly am I doing? So the question uh, reads as it is displayed there. Okay, you are provided with the following. You have a solution labeled P, which is a two molar hydrochloric acid. You have another solution labeled Q uh, that is made by dissolving to uh, 3.2 grams of sodium hydroxide pellets, and the solution is made to uh, 500 decimeter cubes or cubic decimeters. Remember, remember that is a uh, half a liter. Then you're given a solid labeled T. Solid T is uh, 5.0 grams of impure calcium carbonate. The aim of this experiment, therefore, will be to determine the percentage purity of solid T. So we are going to use a back titration procedure and determine the percentage purity of solidity. Now the procedure is as follows. I will go through it, then we do it practically and see how to, we can go about it. You are told using a clean measuring cylinder, you measure 50 uh, cubic centimeters of solution P and you transfer it into another 100 cubic centimeter uh, empty beaker. Then you add all solid T at once to the content in the beaker and then stir until the effervescence stops. Then you go ahead, step number three, you measure uh, 50 cubic centimeters of distilled water and you add into the beaker containing the, the above mixture. And that solution or that mixture, we label it solution R. Then we use that solution R to fill the burette up to the mark. After doing that, we pipette uh, 25 uh, cubic centimeters of solution Q into another conical flask. And then we add three drops of an ophthalm indicator into the solution Q inside the conical flask. After doing that, we titrate. Uh, remember now the burette has solution R then we have solution Q in a conical flask. We titrate the two solutions. Then, of course, we repeat the procedure twice or two more times to fill in the table uh, below. Now I'm very much prepared to do the, the, the practical part. Step number one, I'm supposed to measure 50 centimeters cubed of solution P. So I have the P. I will do 50. So exactly I do 50 of solution P. Exactly uh, 50. Yes. Uh, with the 50, then I transfer it into an empty beaker. So I have 50. The next step, step number two, I take solid T and I empty 
all of it remember this is quantitative analysis so uh, every amount matters a lot so i'm going to empty all uh, solid t into the acid that i have but remember p is two molar uh, hcl so if you can observe keenly what is happening here obviously when a carbonate is added to an acid there is a fluorescence of a colorless gas you can see the fumes the fizzing sound yes so with the back titration we ensure that this the, the, the carbonate is the limiting reagent that tells you the acid we are working with is excess all the carbonate has to react then uh, remember the next step the next step i'm supposed to measure 50 cubic centimeters of distilled water so i'm going to use the same measuring cylinder and i measure 50. i'll have to measure 50 of a distilled water chemistry is very fun chemistry is very fun so so far it's good you go with me go with me the step number one we measured a 50 of the acid the solution labeled p then we added the carbonate on the top of it and as you can see this one all the carbonate reacted telling you the acid was in excess because that is one essence of back titration the acid is in excess so the unreacted acid here is what we're going to do the analysis so i have 50 of distilled water that i add i can ensure i have done this time remember for this procedure i'm adding just but 50 in other case you'll be told to take maybe a volumetric flask a 250 um, ml volumetric flask then you add water to the mark so mind the procedure so i have the solution and this solution i'm instructed to label it solution r so i have solution r so what do i do with solution r this is the solution that i'm going to place into my burette so with this one the solution r i'm going to fill it into the burette so i fill the burette to the zero mark with the solution labeled r the solution r then i'll adjust to the zero mark yep i'll do adjust my solution to the zero mark remember the reading should be at your eye level you should just read at your eye level below the meniscus as we did before so my solution will start from zero so what is the next step good the next step will be to pipette because we are doing this is solution r now i have solution q Remember, I know how solution Q is made. So this will be our, my standard. This is the standard solution because I know the concentration. Whether uh, they have given me the, mol the molality or not, I can do calculate it. So I have solution Q. I can place a litro here. I can just have a litro there. Then I use a 25 ml pipette and I do pipette. So for this case, because I do three trials, I do pipette three uh it into three three portions in that case so i'll have my pipette then i do uh pipette the solution remember i can go above the mark and close it very fast then i do adjust i adjust to this to the mark i do adjust to the mark yes 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 hapo that is it so with that i have the first portion i have the first portion yes the first portion then i can do another one okay so far i've done 
true and this is the third one this is the third portion there the third portion and with that i'm ready to do my three titration processes so in the first one i will add three drops of the northern indicator i do three drops one two 23 years 23 so with that i'm ready for my first trial i'm ready for the first trial i'll be very careful this one you can allow me go down and then i do it remember the first trial where i'm very very careful then the others will be easy so i'll keep adding adding and adding i'll keep adding carefree i'm doing a titration process i'm going i'm going i'm going almost there okay good uh, almost 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 but not good with that i can do the reading 20 25.1 so the volume there if i can do my recording it is 25 point one remember that is my first trial and just to be very sure and to be more accurate i need to do two more trials so that is the first one i can go for the second one and for the second one remember now my volume is beyond 25 i should maybe top up i should take my solution r and then refill the burette to the zero mark I do refill the burette. I can go back all the way to the zero mark. The zero mark, I can again adjust. Yes, I can do adjustment. So it is exactly at zero. And remember this now, I'm going for my second portion. I'm going for the second portion. The second portion, again, three drops. Three drops of phenolphthalein indicator. And you can see phenolphthalein is pink in alkaline solution if that is the case now i can go for the second trial i can do the second one i can do the second one again i start the procedure or the process so for this case i know my volume i know my volume is uh, uh 25 so i can go direct up to 20 I can go directly up to 20 and then I stop it. So that is it, that is it. Uh, okay, now the, the pink color has just disappeared. Just disappeared. And I can do my reading once again. Oh, good. This one reads 24.9. So that is... 24.9 24.9 so i'm within the range remember my first trial was 25.1 now i'm at 24.9 good even as i do the third trial remember now i can still do the top up again i do the top up fill the burette to the mark again and do the very last trial remember even if i don't do the third trial i know I know the range of this uh, volume. So with this one, good. Again, I'm starting at zero. I'm starting at zero mark. And I'm going to do the final trial. Okay, okay, okay. I need to add uh, three drops again of the phenolphthalein indicator. And I do the third trial. I do third trial. So the same, I know my volume. It's somewhere around 25. So with that, I can run down this volume. I can run down the acid. I can go down, I can go down. I need to go up to 20 because I know my volume is roughly 25. I keep adding, keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. 
I'll go down, go down, go down for that matter. I'm almost there. And uh, for that one, it's good. It's good. So I can do the reading. My volume is at 25.0. 25.0. And my three average, all, all the three titers are very much within a range of 0 0.2. So with that one, I'm having 25.0. 25.0 and now for the question because immediately you're now done with the practical part the next section will be to do the calculations you answer questions based on what exactly you've done so the next question as i'm going i'm going to dis, uh, dis, uh, to show you there these are the questions okay now remember now we, we go to the calculations and with the uh, back, okay, or any ordinary titration, the first question will be to calculate the average volume. With this one, my first trial had 25.1. The second trial, trial 24.9. And the third trial had 25.0. Remember, the three titles are within the range of 0 0.2. So I can do the average for all of them. So I'll add the three divided by three. So, and that will give me the average volume of 25.0 cubic centimeter. That is question part A. Question B will be to determine the concentration or rather what you call the molality of a solution Q. For that matter, remember you'll be given the relative atomic masses of sodium, uh, oxygen, and hydrogen. So the very first thing you do is to determine the relative formula mass of sodium. 23 plus 16 plus 1, you get 40. So then you go ahead, uh, if, you, if you go back to the guideline you given, you told that the solution was made by dissolving 3.2 grams of sodium hydroxide in a half a liter. But with molality, it is in one liter. So what do I argue? I can use the first principle and then argue if 500 centimeters cubed has 3.2 grams, what about 1,000? When I do the calculation as I have displayed here, it will be 6.4 grams. Now it's a matter of converting 6.4 grams into moles. And remember now we do the mass divided by the relative formula mass. On the first principle, 6.4 times 1 divided by 40. And with that, I get 0 0.16. And uh, the, the, the sodium hydroxide is my standard solution. So I know the molality. Question C, I'm supposed to calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that was used. Remember, my pipette was 25 centi a cubic centimeter. So with that, again, first principle, a thousand uh, cubic centimeter of that solution has 0 0.16 moles. What about 25? When you work out that, 25 multiplied by 0 0.16 divided by a thousand, you get 0 0.004. Remember, you can still use the formula that the number of moles is given by molality multiplied by volume divided by a thousand. Question part D we are supposed to write down a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between sodium hydroxide and HCl. Good. As I've written, the HCl and sodium hydroxide react with the mole or using a mole of 1 is to 1. So the equation is there, well written. Then go to question part E we are supposed to determine the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, that is solution R, that was used. We can only get the number of moles of uh, HCl that was used if we use the mole ratio. The mole ratio is 1 is to 1, and that tells you the number of moles of HCl is equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in step part D. So the two answers are equal. So the moles of HCl is 0. 0.004 moles. We go to part F. Part F, you're supposed to determine the number of moles of 
uh, hydrochloric acid in a hundred of the solution R. Remember how we prepared solution R? It was prepared by adding 50 of uh, the original solution we had, the one we added the carbonate, then we added water. And that's how the 100 is coming in. So with that, the number of moles in this case, you are going to argue if... Okay, I'm saying uh, we want to calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid in the 100 uh, centimeters cube of solution R. And I have described to you how we prepared solution R. And therefore, you're going to argue if the average volume is containing 0 0.04 moles, what about 100? And if you do the multiplication as I've done, 100 multiplied by 0 0.004 divided by 25, you're going to get 0 0.016 moles. Remember, this is the number of moles of uh, hydrochloric acid that did not react with the carbonate. That's what uh, basically uh, remained. We go ahead to part G. We are supposed to determine the number of moles of hydrochloric acid in the original 50 centimeters cubed of solution P. With solution P, we were given the molality. So we are going to argue that a thousand of that solution contain zero point, not zero point, but it was in this case 2.0 moles of uh, hydrochloric acid. So what about 50? So with that, if you multiply 50 multiplied by 2, you divided by a thousand get 0 0.1 so with that that is 0 0.1 that is the original amount of acid that was in the solution p 50 cubic centimeter part h we determine the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted with the carbonate that is the the solid t if that is the case remember it is the original subtract what remained the original amount of HCl, you subtract what remained in now solution R. And in this case, it will be 0 0.1 subtract 0 0.016. And with that, you get 0 0.048 moles. So this is the number of moles that reacted with the carbonate of the HCl that reacted with the carbonate. We go ahead. The question I, we are supposed to write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and the carbonate. Good, with that one, as I've written for you, it is one mole of calcium carbonate reacting with the two moles of HCl to get calcium chloride, carbon oxide, and water. The ratio for reaction in this case, one mole of the carbonate reacts with the two moles of the acid. And that's what takes us to question part J, that we are supposed to determine the number of moles of calcium carbonate, that is solid T, that reacted with hydrochloric acid. That is solution P. We use the mole ratio. For every one mole of the carbonate, you need two moles of the acid. So if I have the moles of the acid, I need to divide it by two. 0 0.048 divided by two for you to get 0 0.042 moles. Good, these are the moles of carbonate. So part K of the question, you are supposed to calculate the molar mass of calcium carbonate. You must be given, in this case, you must be given the relative atomic mass. With that 40, you add 12, then plus 48. You get 100 grams per mole. That is the molar mass of calcium carbonate. If that is the calcium carbonate, good. We now go to question part L. Calculate the mass of calcium carbonate that reacted. With the mass, you only need to multiply the number of moles multiplied by the relative formula mass. And that is 100, you multiply by 0 0.042. You get 4.2 grams. And finally, the question that is in line with our objective, calculate the percentage of uh, calcium carbonate in the impure solidity. In that one, 4.2 divided by 5, you multiply by 100, and you get, in this case, it will be 84. So the solidity we were working with, the impure uh, calcium carbonate, it was 84% pure. The rest, of course, were impurities. 
Good. And uh, maybe to take you through the, 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 the video, the instruction or rather the illustration of the same. Good. Having done the calculations, I want to give you the exact scenario of what has happened. Remember, I, start, I started with a solution P, a 2 molar hydrochloric acid. The solution P uh, was, I, I did measure, I did 50 ml of solution uh, P. I placed it into an empty beaker. And in this case, I added the carbonate. The acid, in this case, must be in excess. The calcium carbonate, in this case, was the limiting reagent that all of it has to react. And once all the carbonate has reacted, some amount of HCl in this beaker remained unreacted. And as we do titration in this case, we are trying to analyze the amount of hydrochloric acid that remained unreacted. So, and uh, if I can also just bring to your attention, the impurity, remember this was impure calcium carbonate, the impurities did not react. So only the carbonate reacted. Having done that, I used a standard sodium hydroxide solution to help me determine the amount of acid that did not react in this uh, beaker or rather in the mixture that I have made here. So having done that, now I need to remember the original solution I had, that is this, uh, the two molar hydrochloric acid, uh, was we had 50 of it. And therefore, I could determine the original amount of the acid I added before the carbonate, okay? Having gotten that, now I will be guided by the equation for the reaction between the carbonate and the, the HCl. That's what now gives me the amount of, um, uh, by working with that equation, I'm able to know what amount of the carbonate, or rather the, yeah, the carbonate reacted with the acid, the original acid, as I've tried to, to, to do for you. So I've proceeded having determined the amount of the carbonate that reacted using the relative formula mass of the calcium carbonate, I can get the mass. And with that, I even get the percentage purity. Why is this process called a back titration? And uh, maybe to just to tell you, why is it a back titration? It's a back titration because if you consider like the very first step after measuring the 50 ml of solution P, we added the carbonate. But when you talk about the calculation, the calcium carbonate is mentioned towards the, the last step. Actually, we have used the calcium carbonate in our calculation as part of the very last step, the solid or, or rather determining the percentage uh, purity, we've done it as the last step. So in other words, the procedure and the working will go in an opposite way. The, 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 the working will go in a backward manner. So that's why it's called a back titration. Otherwise, my student, you can, uh, the, the back titration process can come in uh, uh, very many ways. It can be determining the percentage purity. You can be asked to determine the relative formula mass of a given unknown metal in a compound. You can be told to determine the water, that we call it water of crystallization. That is how many molecules of water of crystallization in a solid, etc., etc. So this is just but one example. So therefore, do not fear titration. Keep trying it, especially the calculations. And the table gives you some free marks. Remember like what I described before, you need to get the marks for uniform decimals, you need to get the mark for complete table, you need to get the mark for principle of averaging, and of course the accuracy and the final accuracy. Those are free marks for you. So back titration, another very good titration for a form 3 a student and even a form 4. So do not forget to come back into this channel when I upload more and more of chemistry. Otherwise, I love you so much, my student. All the best in your study uh, for chemistry.